Do you know that there are at least four ways to do question answering in LangChain? In this video, we're going to show you four different ways to do question answering in LangChain. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to build a question answering PDF chatbot to ask questions about your PDF, just like this app. Okay, let's get started with coding. So you will first need to install needed packages. And then you need to type in your OpenAI API key. I already ran the cell and uh, removed my key, but you will need to pass in your key here. Because we're building a question answering engine, I guess you will need to have your external document first. I am interested in interacting with a PDF. So here I'm using PyPDF loader. There are a lot of different document loaders if you are interested in CVS file, you can use CVS loader, you can use DuckDB loader if you are using a DuckDB file, uh, even an S3 file, YouTube, you can interact with your YouTube videos. I think this actually will give the transcript from the video, so which is super convenient. But in this example, I'm using a PDF file because I was reading this report, 2023 AI index report, which is a really good read. I saved the first chapter as example.pdf in the materials folder. If you check the documents, you can see the content of the document. It is actually separated by different pages. Okay, so the first method to do question answering in LangChain is called the load QA chain. This chain provides the most generic interface for answering questions. It lets you do question answering over a set of documents, but it uses all of those documents. So in this example, we have load QA chain and the LLM, we're using the default OpenAI GPT-3 and then chain type, let's do stuff first. Stuff means that we want to pass in all of the text into the prompt into the LLM. And then we can run the chain with the question, how many AI publications in 2021? So let's take a look. This is expected, by the way. You can see the model's context maximum token is 4,097. However, we requested this many tokens because our PDF file actually has uh, more than 50 pages, so it's a lot of text. There are actually two types of solutions. One is we change the chain type. The second solution is the second method I'm going to talk about in a little bit. If we change the chain type to, for example, map reduce this would work. Now we got the answer. In 2021, the total number of AI publications was almost 500,000, which is correct, by the way. Okay, so now you might wondering, what other chain types do we have? Great questions. Here's the line chain document. The stuff chain, as I said before, basically passing all the text into your prompt. Map reduce chain actually separate your document into different batches and feed each batch into your large language model separately and returns the answer separately. Here's an example where we have four batches. The first batch was able to answer the question and the next three batches were not able to answer the question. And the final text was based on the answer of the first batch. One thing to notice is that batch size actually matters and you can define your batch size in your language model. The refine chain is actually similar to the map reduce chain. You also break down your document into different batches. You feed your first batch into your language models and then you feed the output of the first batch and the second batch into your language model and your answer get refined along the sequence of batches. As you can see here, the answers just get longer and more refined at each step. The refined chain is actually a sequence, right? But MapReduce is everything can be in parallel, so MapReduce can be a little faster. Here is, for example, how it works under the hood. Here is the refined template where we have an existing answer, and now we have the opportunity to refine the ex existing answer only if needed with some more context below, and this will be the text of the next batch. Map rerank chain is also very similar to map reduce with the additional score at the end of each answer for each batch. So the score is defined as how fully it answered the user's question. So the final answer is actually based on uh, the answer with higher scores. So those are four chains. 
as you can see in our example here, when we use MapReduce chain, it indeed was able to return an answer for us. The downside though, is that this actually uses a lot of tokens. It actually uses all of the tokens in the PDF file, which can be really costly if your file is large. A better solution in my mind is to retrieve relevant text chunks from your document and only use those relevant text in your language model. So your language model actually is not looking through all the text, but only looking through a small chunk of text. That is our second method, retrieval QA. Uh, retrieval QA chain actually uses load QA chain under the hood. We retrieve the most relevant chunk of text and feed those to the language model. First of all, we load our document as what we did before, and then we split the document into different chunks. You can define the chunk size here, and then we can select which embeddings we want to use. Here we're using the opening eye embeddings, and then we create embedded vectors for all of the chunks. And then we can expose this index in the uh, in a retriever interface. Basically, what does it mean is when you have an embedded vector of your question, and then you have a database of the embedded vectors of text chunks, you can find which of the vectors in your vector database is the most similar to your question vector and only retrieve the relevant ones. So that's the retriever step. And the final step is to create a chain to answer questions. Here we use the retrieval QA chain. Uh, again, you can define what language models you like. You can define your chain type again. Now, if you ask a question, how many AI publications in 2021? As you can see in the result, we have our query, our result, almost 500K, which is correct, and source document. There are actually two documents here, two of the most relevant document to answer this question because I defined my number of documents as two. That's pretty straightforward. But there are a lot of options you can play with. For example, there are a lot of embedding methods. Here we use OpenAI embedding, but you can also use Cohere embeddings and use hugging face embeddings. You can even choose different models from hugging face. The next thing we can choose is we can choose different types of text splitter. In this example, we used character text splitter, uh, which uses a single character to split the text. The chunk size is measured as the number of characters, but you can also use different text splitter and different uh, tokens as to how the chunk is measured by different tokens instead of different characters. Another thing we can explore is here we used Chroma as the vector store. Different vector store may give you different capabilities that you can take a look. And then retrievers are also different retrievers. <laughs> I know there are a lot of options you can explore here. I just used the most generic vector store retriever, um, but there are different search types again. The first way is the similarity search where the search type equals similarity, which means you're trying to find the most similar vector to your question vector. Or you can use MMR, which is maximum marginal relevance search. So it does not only optimize for similarities in vectors, it also optimizes for diversity in vectors, which means the first chunk it shows should be a little more different from the second chunk. The third method is vector store index creator, the wrapper around the above functionalities that we just mentioned. It's exactly the same under the hood. It's just a higher level interface to let you get started with three lines of code. Okay, so you can see you can just use three lines of code to get the same answer. And of course, with vector store index creator, you could change your parameters and uh, define different options of your text splitter, embedding, and vector score, as we mentioned previously. If you want to take a look at the code, here is how the vector store index wrapper is defined. As you can see here, the default language model is using the OpenAI GPT-3. It is using the retrieval QA of the second method. The default vector store is Chroma. The default embedding is OpenAI embeddings. The default text splitter is this function, which is a recursive character text splitter. Yeah, so you can see all the default functions in this wrapper and you can change right here. And the final method 
is the conversational retrieval chain, which basically combines conversation memory plus the retrieval QA chain. So if you want to keep all your chat histories and passing your chat history to your language model, this one is for you. So everything here is basically the same as we have seen before. You split the documents into chunks, select embeddings, create vector stores, and then um, use the retriever interface, and then use a chain to answer questions. The chain here, we're using conversational retrieval chain, and we call it QA. We define a chat history as an empty list. In addition to defining our question query, we can also pass in all, all of the chat history into the language model. Uh, when we start the conversation, the chat history is empty, is an empty list. So the answer here is the same as before, 500,000. And then the chat history, we're passing the query and the answer from the previous query, which is 500K. And then we can ask another question, what is this number divided by two? And sending this chat history and this question into the language model, and it returns the correct answer, which is 250K. As you can see, it actually has the context of this number represented 500K, uh, and then divided by two is 250K. So that's it for this video. We introduced four methods to do question answering in Langchain. In the next video, I'm going to make a question answering chatbot. So see you next time.